Hey there, welcome to the first edition of the National Post Speakeasy for 2018. I'm here at the Metropolitan Brasserie with uh, John Iveson in Ottawa. John, this is a pretty big week uh, for Canada, hosting a big summit on North Korea and Vancouver. Uh, do you think that that summit's actually going to do anything? Well, it's notable, notable for who is not there, and that's the Chinese and the Russians. I don't know how much you can get done in North Korea without the, the Chinese. But I remember being at a committee meeting where uh, where Daniel Jean, the senior, the national security advisor's name was, was brought up, and he'd been in Pyongyang, and he'd met with senior North Korean officials, and the feeling was there that Canada is not a, a hostile country; it's a potentially friendly country. Um, so potentially, Canada could be a broker here between to actually getting something done. Uh, but you know, as, again, as I say, the Chinese are instrumental in anything that happens there. Um, and they're not going to be at the table, so it's it, you know that is a limitation for sure. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, there's a bit of a criticism from the Japanese too that maybe too many countries are invited here. They're focused on the UN sending states from the Korean War, um, but maybe it's a, a little bit too big of a table, and, and they wonder whether the economic sanctions that the UN agreed to will actually be more effective in putting pressure on North Korea. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I, I think one interesting thing is that uh, you had a story about whether China was invited or not, and the, the, it seems that the Canadians did invite them and the Americans either disinvited them or, uh, well, we don't really know what happened. But mm -hmm. the interesting thing to me is that Canadian foreign policy has always been geared towards getting along with the Americans. Now it seems that we're in a new universe where we're trying to get along with the Chinese as well. We're kind of caught in the middle and there are competing interests. We've seen it on the trade front mm -hmm. too. Um, I think that's going to be a future thing to watch for in Canadian foreign policy. Yeah, and while you mentioned trade, uh, the next round of NAFTA negotiations is coming up. Uh, you've heard some interesting chatter about what the Americans might do if Trump does withdraw from NAFTA. Yeah, I think that uh, they're already getting their excuses in line as to what they're gonna, what they're, how they're going to blame the Canadians for <laughs> this uh, potential debacle. And the idea of Trudeau's progressive trade agenda, which has already upset potential partners at the TPP and the Chinese when uh, when Trudeau went to Beijing, it seems that this is a, a major preoccupation for, for the Americans too. I mean, it's only two out of 28 tables that are being discussed, separate negotiations. That's on uh, gender parity and Aboriginal affairs. But it's, it upsets the Americans that the Canadians are trying to impose their agenda. It, I think that uh, it's, it, it may not happen yet. Trump may not pull out. He may look at the stock markets and think, well, this, mm. this is my greatest achievement. If, it, if uh, pulling out and after hits the stock markets, uh, let's not do it. But uh, the stage, I think, is set for, uh, for that to happen. We already saw stories about uh, Canadian officials thinking it's more likely that Trump will withdraw from the agreement. And that created, created an effect on the Canadian dollar and the markets almost immediately. So. Right. I mean, if he does pull out, the, the dollar is going to tank. But, but uh, on the other hand, they are, the Canadian side is now prepared to soften its position on a number of key areas, including uh, rules of origin and the sunset clause and even the dispute resolution mechanism. It looks like Canada is prepared to move from its strict, this is a non-starter negotiating mm -hmm. position. So in Montreal, at the end of the month, we may see some results. Okay, well, we'll watch and see what happens. Thanks for joining us on the National Post Speakeasy. We'll see you next time.